stuff here. Prepare for battle. But uh, so it does seem like they're gonna be running box in mid in the end and quick put in the off. Well, actually, I'm, I'm saying I'm speaking too quickly. Maybe it's not the case. But assuming that because uh, box CIC has the ward. Right? Yeah, I mean, Koikva has not purchased any items yet, though. Of course, just haul and spider butt down to the bottom lane to get the webs. I mean, it looks like from, from the way he's playing, he's just going straight down bottom to, to plant his early webs. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. uh, this, okay. yeah, this guy, it's bottom. That's bottom, alright. Well, there would be the ultimate mind strat, like, <laughs> mind games here by, by Liquid. You put the webs bottom, then Koikva shows up mid. Zero webs, who cares? And yeah, then they're, I, they're all preparing for the brood mother. Great, great way to uh, to troll the casters, I suppose. I think your enemies would be having a laugh at that. Uh, just one thing I, I want to <laughs> point, quickly point out for Boxy. Oh, uh, oh okay. Oh. They were setting up the fortunes on the three together with a pushwhack that stops any attempt of initiation. But OG just has stronger level one, so they're gonna be able to push him away from the bounty rune and take it for themselves. I think it's that's fine. So what, what draft are you favoring at the end? I, I'm slightly OG favored here. Yeah, I am too. I just think Topson's going to have a real easy time, to be honest, especially because it is going to be the Mars mid at the end of the day. Um, the yep. Mars early rotations, I think, can definitely make or break this, for sure, for Boxy. But um, I don't think he's got really too many easy targets either, to be honest. Lion, you know, is, is a good one. The Wyvern as well is a good one. But, you know, you can just Arctic burn and fly over the walls of the arena and ruin his day. Uh, I don't think yep. Timbersaw is dying too easily, especially if he gets an early Hooded Defiance up. So... It's um seems it seems hard. I, I think like Liquid, they've they've drafted themselves into a position where they do need to play some really solid Dota and come up with some clever plays, as well as of course playing yeah. with a stand-in. But they're a team that can do it. I don't, I don't think they got out drafted because I just think their team fight or their their game is a bit harder because they're yeah. playing a super high tempo of game. So that's why like I don't think World Draft is better necessarily. Just that one is clearly easier to execute, and I think that is definitely OGs. But Okay, yeah, let's see what Liquid can do. This is their style. Strong lanes into a powerful mid game, and then hopefully close out the game as soon as possible. Sometimes they struggle doing that last part, but that is that is what Liquid likes to do. It's true. It's and true. Illidan used to play that way as well, I think, sometimes. Oh, he's, uh, when he played the trial, that was one of his favorite heroes. Seb lacked uh, the range, it looked like, on the Timber Chain level 1 to be able to break the uh, Static Link, so just a little bit more damage for Illidan will make these first waves a bit easier. Uh, real quick note on Boxy, as I was interrupted by the first blood attempt last time around. Uh, you know, hey Boxy, no, wait, welcome back. Bottom. Oh, they're going again. Taiga, uh, Taiga did not go for boots level one, which means Smail could just proceed to pummel him, but he's not going to die there. They didn't want to rush for it. You All were right. saying, Boxy, welcome back. Yeah, so Boxy, welcome back. You know, oh, by the way, we don't have the full squad. Uh, game one was normal. We played a normal offlane game. Second game, which they did lose, he was actually kind of playing a pseudo carry axe. Um, they kind of awkwardly yeah, swapped true. lanes, you know, six minutes in even. So now he's. But Liquid uh, I've always lane. had this belief, though. Like, there's no such thing as a roll, it's just heroes that you're good with. Whoa, the damage on Koifa. So He'll be fine. Like, we've seen this before, you know? We've seen Quakeva play, like, the carry roll sometimes from the mid lane, and or Mikkei doing the same thing. In fact, Mikkei sometimes plays the Ember Spirit from the mid lane, right? Like, it's not the first time that Liquid swapped rolls, so I don't think it's crazy to them to see that. It was just when Insania played carry that I was like, all right, that's that's a major swap. <laughs> yeah, that, that one was definitely a bit more surprising when we saw who locked in the, uh, yeah. the hard carry CK. Koikva now finally up to level two. He's going to need to uh, pop this Insatiable Hunger at a good time. Still a bit of regen left, but no tell with plenty of mana and some out. Lots of damage to go around. Oh, They're going to go for Taiga. One second stun, though. He's going to allow Taiga to get off the fairy fire. No tail can't close the gap in time. Okay, now it could be that they get a counter kill on Samael. Samael needs to get away. Reality Rift, but he didn't get a crit there to heal. No tail will get a counter kill on Taiga, but that is not the first blood. Huge win there for Liquid. However, No Tail actually cleaning up the space. He wants to lean to himself. No Tail gonna be the pseudo carrier. Yeah, I was, uh, I was, had my eyes on mid where Topson and Boxy were fighting over the uh, water runes here. Eventually, it looks like Boxy tried to. But get, you cut uh, the kills bottom. One. Yeah, of course, of course. Oh. Uh, Seb. There's a little timber chain on Seb, but yeah, once he has the level two reactive armor, it seems like he's fine. How is Thompson doing in this mid lane since you've been watching it so carefully, my friend? Uh, pretty good. Lots of sparring out from Boxy, definitely showing his prowess here on the mid lane. Mars, uh, for sure, you know, is uh, definitely playing like he could 
get plenty of extra free kills out from his rotations at level six. Um, but again, because we're, we're not actually laning the Broodmother mid lane, Topson has the liberty as well to rotate away. He's not going to be too concerned if he does end up rotating top that an Axe, or sorry, that a Mars rather is going to be able to take his tower, say, as quickly as a Broodmother who's level six can. That's true. In fact, I think there's a point where, oh, wait, Quickva in the bottom lane. They have Check the Chaos stuff. Bolt. Nice little bushwhack. Quickva. Still a bit slow, but Sameo in a similar position, can't quite get that kill. Noto is doing so much with a Splinter Blast. So yeah, I think there's a point where you rotate Timbersaw bottom to deal with the Broodmother uh, Spiderlings. Ideally, you take the tower top as well, so maybe Puck rotates top early, takes the Razor kill, then you take the tower and then you give freedom to Seb to go bottom. Or alternatively, the Puck goes bottom, kills Quakeva, you already weakened that, and you leave Timbersaw completely alone, and you go with Puck plus the two supports as a ganking squad, trying to find whatever kills you can muster. Silk and Bola onto No Tail. Three seconds stun now, two points here in the Chaos Bolt, nothing in the crit here for Sumail. There's No Tail now popping the Arctic Burn, looking to turn. They're going to be able to create a bit of gap as well here with the Reality Rift. They're going to get the kill onto Taiga top lane, though. It's going to be Insania with the kill onto Soxa as they do boot Seb away from the lane for a bit. That uh, that top lane, we already expected it to be a bit difficult. Razor's strong laner, Timbersaw can't really do much against him once he gets Chakram, so not much surprise. I like to bring up protection early, though, for the extra armor. I don't like you're going to use the mana too much. It's really just the extra armor is kind of useful here, just to deal with the Razor a bit. He's going to have free farm, but you're not too concerned about this. Timbersaw can recover eventually, Hi, especially because the Timbersaw probably got picked just to deal with the Broodmother. Absolutely. Well, that's your main goal anyway. Topson gets the bottle refill after Soxa takes the death. Soxa then sent along his merry way back to the top lane. He might be back to fight over power runes here in just under a minute. We'll see if they decide to rotate anyone away from the bottom lane. I, I think this, this lane's a little bit too high octane for either of these supports to leave, though. So it ought to just be the Lion uh, and this Master Tier Oracle of Insania if they are going to rotate anyone away towards this mid lane for power runes. Oh, the bushwhack in the bottom lane. They go for Noto again. Another Splinter Blast. Noto doesn't have the Arctic Burn this time, though, so he's going to fall to Quikva. And Quikva getting stronger and stronger. Now with the Orb of Corrosion, harder to get away from this Broodmother. But Sumail's still getting a decent amount of farm. It's been canceled out of the lane, and in fact, Quikva only has nine lasses, so he's not too happy with this lane, even with the kills and the pressure he's putting out. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point, actually. It, it's it's decent pressure. He's suffering a little bit in the levels. It took him, like, I think two minutes to get up to level two here uh, in this lane. As Power Rune spawning in, they're going to go 50-50. Thompson wins the toss with the Illusion Rune. Nothing too crazy for him. Shouldn't result in a kill. But Quikva doing a lot of work here with the Silicon Bola. Uh, now having the Orb of Corrosion and completing uh, some infused raindrops is going to help him a little bit here in terms of uh, his ability to fight versus Sumail and uh, a Winter Wyvern should she choose to show her face again in this lane. Yeah, but one of the issues of uh, having a strong lane against a Broodmother like a CK is that now when the Hoodwink leaves to naturally do Hoodwink things and try to gank, you leave the Broodmother in a very precarious position. CK can continue to farm, you can't really fight him 1v1, and that gives an advantage to OG when it comes to the lane pressure. Top lane, Seb, he's tanking the Static Link nicely. Elden really wants to commit, but it's a Timbersaw. You just can take the damage and use it to last it at best. Yeah, looks there. Bottom Looking lane, Smail, scenes a squirrel. Wants to kill the squirrel, but here comes a Mars box. He surprises them. They have Arena of Blood still available. So Mail no. could be in trouble. They actually spear him to the wall. Again, stole the arena just in case, but Samail gets saved with the cold embrace boxy. As not want to let this target go. Samail needs to go up to the high ground. It's impossible for him, so he's going to fall. Yep. Here comes the counter rotation though, Topson. Just gonna be able to find Insania. Not as valuable as a kill, unfortunately, as the kill onto Sumail, but it is something. In the meantime, he will be able to scout these stacks that they had brewing here for the Mars. And I'll actually be able to steal a couple of them, farming some neutrals uh, along the way. It's not the worst rotation out from Topson, but it's not quite a kill onto the enemy carry. Yeah, because they. Because they got the, the rotation first on Mars. Oh, hold on, oh. Sumail already come on top. Oh, he is coming top, okay. So yeah, because they got the rotation first with Mars, Puck couldn't do the same thing top. So now you have to try to do something big top to kill Elden, because you only got a support out of it. There's the Reality Rift, plus the Chaos Bolt. Elden could be in trouble if Thompson joins, Stream Cold still hasn't been used. Elden is going to fall to Thompson. Nice little kill there. And this can result into a tower that'd be ideal, but maybe Seb just wants to go bottom to try to help out. Make sure you don't lose your tier one for free against the Broodmother. But you have Chakram, right? I don't know if you can afford to stay up top this this much. 
Radiant's bottom tower That's is a good attack. point, actually. Yeah, and here there he goes. Go. Okay, now Sep's making the rotation as soon as Quickma shows. So, yep, I'm level six. I've already got the spider long army. Uh, a Bruin here, quite large, and here's Quickma already looking to cut waves. Attack. Luckily, Timber is able to, um, you know, also do the same thing w with uh, great ease. So it shouldn't just be the the Broodmother just casually uh, keep taking this tower too easily. It's top lane, Illidan looking for another kill. It's got a little bit of damage stolen, 56, more than enough to get the kill here on Asaksa. In fact, he might escape. No. Instead, Taiga pulled in by the Reality Rift of Sumail. Short little stun onto Hoodwink, but there's heals immediately from Insania. They won't be able to progress any further here. All right. Take the... We took a small line kill. It's not that big a deal because Timbersaw managed to stop this push down bottom. And as you can see, Quick was just now cutting lanes, recovering. This is the flash farm we're talking about. Not the ideal situation for Broodmother, but a situation that is okay and acceptable for Quickva. And a way to recover and still put pressure. In the same way, Liquid is going to respond to OG by trying to go up top and preventing them from taking an easy tower. After all, the Razor versus CK matchup does benefit the Razor ever so slightly. Taiga, however, won't be benefited by this too much. It's a Fates Edict, and he's a scurry already. Dream Cold just for Insania. Curse. They use the Winter's Curse to get rid of the Razor, and Insania should die. That No, with a pushback, Insania's fine for now. And in fact, Illidan is going for the Winter Wyvern, trying to kill No-Tail. He is going to get that kill. He stole a bunch of damage, has the magic wand. Illidan trying to get away. Box here comes Boxy helping out the arena, just a bit late. Face shift avoids that spear. Thompson is fine for now. I was having loser up just yet. Waning rift to the high gun. Thompson needs to avoid more damage. The healing from the purifying flames is keeping him alive. Thompson going up to the high gun. He wants to get away, but will he succeed? He might just have to consider suicide. And he's not even going to get it. Thompson will die to Insania's auto attack there. Yeah, really, really nice play by Insania. Uh, OG just really looking to utilize those early ultimates. We're not really looking for a full five-on-five five engagement, which is uh, which I think why those were two solo ults onto uh, one onto Illidan with the curse and the coil onto Insania, just because they want these pickoffs. They want space for the tower. Uh, unfortunately, not only will they not get the tower, but they'll lose Thompson for that. Uh, Boxy just hovering around the top lane. Last time he wasn't able to make uh, any plays out from it. But this time, though, he's rather successful uh, and is able to at least turn the ties of that fight. OG, though, persistent as ever. They'll head straight back top. Yep. I think Liquid is responding accordingly. They're still finding farm for Boxy, which is going to be the main uh, space creator in the early mid game. And then by, by Illidan just staying top, this tower won't fall, and that's as much as he needs right now. I the Storm is ready in a second. He's stolen a bunch of damage. Dream Cold, though, you don't care for the stolen damage, you're gonna burst him down. If you can't attack, what's the point of the static link? That's what OG's discovered. Best way to deal with Razor is murder. It was a three second stun. We uh, also had Boxy already take care of that tier one down yep. bottom. Massive spider lane armor here has been amassed as uh, he's actually going to look to now rotate okay. to the mid lane. Okay. Solo curse here. He's not going to do much versus Boxy. No tail. As, uh, yep, they got him quite easily. No tail will fall. And that's the moment where he knew he had screwed up. That was, there was a moment there where Winter's Curse stayed for a second too long, realized Broodmother wasn't there, probably rotating. And Koika is playing a bit more active Broodmother, not staying in the bottom lane, wanted to put pressure mid as well. Timbersaw didn't quite cancel her entirely in the early game. Oh, she still took the tower. They're making another play top. Illidan with the link onto Soxa. The arena's erected, only catching Sumail in it. Illidan with a 40 damage stolen or thereabouts. And Sumail attempting to TP away. It's the Hex for Taiga to stop a stun from coming through, but they didn't need it. Illidan with plenty of damage already. Soxa with a nice juke here. It does manage to avoid the bushwhack as Notel TPing on in. Even without Curse, is going to be able to repel them uh, liquid from going any further underneath that tier 1 tower. I'm glad that Elden has not changed since the original days. He's the not the win condition kind of carry. He's the utility carry that helps you out. The brawling carry that, that is always active. Razor oh, suits his style perfectly. He used to play it a lot. And it's suiting them because they've managed to defend this tier 1. And now the jungle swap that OG would be looking for is not possible. Liquid is capable of still taking over bottom. And once they take over mid, this and this Mars comes online, they'll start pressuring OG heavily. However, the threat of the puck is still... Uh, a thing for OG here, or for Liquid rather. And we talked about this, lack of stuns on Puck and make Thompson have a really free game. Maybe that's what they're waiting for. Thompson to get one or two big items, particularly the Witchblade, and then going ham on the enemy. Yep. So Seb, is, he's abandoned all hope down in the bottom lane. That's infested by spiders, and, and he'd rather not. If there's one thing that uh, Timber's all afraid of after trees, it's, it might be spiders. Fights breaking out in the mid lane. Finger of death for Boxy. They nuked him down. Winner's curse here on a Koikva. Only one creep to surround him. The stun is three seconds onto him. Sharpshooter, though, is going to pick up Sapsa. Embrace with the, by the Wyvern. 
Koifa has got plenty of healing, and Sani as well. Still holding on to the false promise here as now Koifa turning and murders No Tail. Doesn't get much lifesteal off, but now Sumail left behind here. Could be in trouble. Koifa, though, returning, realizing that Seb's TPing on over. Doesn't want any trouble. Bushwhack at least holding down Seb. It was Thompson in the face of Illidan. He's got still a decent amount of damage now, 72. <laughs> It's like, guys, why are you backing? We can still murder them, Seb, in the middle of this, though. He's not afraid of spiders, by the way, because they immediately uh, use the reactive armor. That is true. They yeah, he, he's, he's, he's really not he's... afraid of spiders. He just wanted to farm top and push oh, he... top. That was the joke, uh, the attempted yeah, that... joke. Yeah. Uh, Illidan, by the way, or sorry, in that fight, I really want to point out that Taiga's done this a couple of times. Uh, he's always there for the retreat, because since Bushwhack takes away the, the vision from the target, right, it's so very difficult for them to chase after you when the guy leading the charge, if he's stunned, fine, he can't charge any further. But if he has no vision, it's difficult for the rest of OG to continue, because Liquid could be setting up for a trap. Yeah. So it puts you in a very precarious position. I like how Taiga's playing this. He's like, Bushwhack for free? No, no tail. Could just die here. They're charging the sharpshooter. Oh, look oh down, block Mr. President. Some mail. Nice job. Some mail might be a carry, but he's a support at heart, helping out his teammates. Power. What a friendship. nice guy. They got that flower yep. power going now for OG. Making sure that no tail stays alive. What's going Meanwhile, on here, you tap into the comms, and it's just no tail screaming at somebody like, "Block me! Block me! They're gonna kill it! Block me now! Block me now! I got you to this team." I know. Seb. We like to hope for the best things from the players. I'm sure they, they've got some uh, positive vibes going. That's what they said yesterday, anyway, after their initial win. Coil dropped here uh, for Illidan, just to make sure they couldn't oh, chase. No, Boxy. Thompson was looking to go back, but Boxy, again, just rotating top third time. Now he's made this play. Didn't work the first time, worked nicely the second time. Third time he even is rewarded now with this kill onto the puck. I love Boxy's persistence at, at just continuing to rotate top for the in turn. It's mid lane, Soxa. Yep. So he's going to get the cold embrace. Has now Seb broken, but does keep Soxa alive. I guess has been very on point with the squirrel. I, I think he's been having a really good performance. From the casual kills to the great bushwhack, they're using sharpshooter for... Remember, the sharpshooter does push you back, so helps you a lot get out of the, these situations. Can't be using escape, not the longest cooldown ever. I feel like uh, oh, Liquid is taking advantage of OG's indecision with their, with their movement sometimes. And Liquid's always there to punish that. As, um, of course, Odin just leading. Go for Seb. Now Tiger could be in trouble. He was in the false heart to save him, but Winter's Curse to reset this fight. Can they continue his OG? No they arena. go in, Boxy's ready. No arena though, they're gonna burst down Ilden. At this rate, he's been hexed, they turn him into sushi. Ilden will fall. Spiders are coming. Kind of a freebie there. Taiga does bushwhack Thompson. Do they have the damage to kill him? They do with a sharpshooter. Taiga just had it ready there. As Seb, trying to run away, trying to save no but the Spiders end up finishing him off. A nice little Fortune Zen, pretty long duration as well, but Spear wasn't ready to push him back just yet. Koikva trying to find the supports, but he lost all his Spider army. He just got new ones off Sox's dead corpse. It's a nice little win for Liquid there, despite losing Illidan, I'd say. Oh, oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, you, you get three, you get another overextension basically out from uh, Thompson. He ends up just way too far out from his team. And OG then are a little bit stretched thin, which made it a perfect time for Koikfa to just kind of nip him in the butt like a true spider would uh, immediately onto the Winter Wyvern, uh, who didn't have the Cold Embrace anyway, but is still super useful for, for exactly this, as uh, these spider lanes at least are able to live thanks to the web regen. Uh, but Lion as well was uh, really in a, in a bit of a pinch. Good teamwork though out from OG. Is going to be able to get him out? Seb looking back now for this tier one tower in the mid lane, which they failed to get before. And Sanya holding him down with the roots. That is the vessel already completed here for Taiga. Boots into the vessel, and now Illidan coming back. We fighting, boys. We fighting. Onto the other side of the river though, and uh, despite having the vessel debuff applied, Seb should still be able to stay alive for now. But Boxy looking to oh. change that sharpshooter, perfectly calculated. We'll find him. No tail without a cold embrace. It is going to die to the spiderlings, if not Boxy trying to at least get the spiderlings to get the kill. No such luck. He is going to go down to the auto attacks of Taiga, and it's Liquid who actually take the mid tier one tower first. Judging by his performance, I don't think Illidan is asked if they fight. He just goes in. Yep. He just, just immediately leads the charge. And it's been working for them, you know? Uh, Broodmother oh, has been kind of a pseudo win condition. What's he doing up, up, up here? Yeah. He was trying to cut or push the lane, and instead he'll be pushed into a coffin. He's so close to his beat, a Blink Dagger as well. I think that's probably what he was doing. Dying to Thompson here alone. Oh, even committed the Dream Coil just in case. He's out to False Promise, actually, I think. And the Dream Coil stopped that with the mini stun. Yeah. Better safe than sorry. You don't want to waste that kill. Um, for now, now that the well, now that you've lost your tier one tower, uh, I don't think you really want to be making any too aggressive plays here for OG. 
because um, they, they can't reinforce quickly. You can't buy back. You can't reinforce if someone else is split push across the map. So, you know, I, I support the move. Secure the kill. You don't mind not fighting for a full minute. Just farm a little bit here. I say that now, but Notel is looking to try and farm up some spiders. And uh, here's Seb. Do need to push in top lane. He's just finished off the Crimson Guard here after the Vanguard. We'll have that one fully completed and on the way. He's going to do a, a big favor to his supporting staff to make sure that they don't just get, yeah. you know, immediately eaten by all the spiderlings. And we're going to smoke and fight here. I so think now. it's smart points. Because they've been kill getting killed often by the spiderlings as well. So I think the Crimson Guard is, I mean, as an offlaner, you can lead, but if you have nobody to follow you, who cares, right? I think the Crimson Guard's a really smart choice. Agreed. Seb held Bush down. Whack. They're rotating around so the spider, though, or uh, rotating around the squirrel. That uh, bushwhack has an absurd range. Seb's like, I swear I wasn't even close to a tree. And if you timber chain, you can even actually practice it with Taiga, right? The tree gets broken, but if you timber chain into a, a couple of trees, bushwhack can easily predict it there. So uh, pseudo counter to timber saw in that sense. Mm. I could see it. I could see it. When Taiga finally on top, and now I think is when he becomes too... Too slippery to get killed, I believe, with a blink dagger. Is this a turning point here for OG, perhaps? I think it could be. Unfortunately, they weren't able to get much out from that smoke. Now Sox says blink dagger is going to be revealed by the ward right outside of Roche. I believe that is Taiga fervently blinking, uh, pinging, pardon me, making the entire team aware of the lion blink dagger. So that shouldn't have much of a surprise now on the likes of Liquid, who themselves, they've got a sm Do they have a smoke? Don't see one here actively. They do. It's it's going to be on the Hoodwink instead, who is looking to just continue farming and keep the waves pushed out top lane. Seb. Okay, he hit for the Yule Scepter of Box. The arena walls are erected, and that will leave Seb in a very bad spot. The break in case they needed it. Winter's Curse again from No-Tail does not connect onto anyone. Only holding down Illidan for a second and a half is now No-Tail attempting to TP away. Just way too much burst damage. The physical damage insane right now out from Koikva. Now the Roshan is a possibility for Liquid as well. I don't know if OG can fight this. I mean, you have no Winter's Curse there. You still have a Dream Coil, but are you even interested in fighting this? It's going to take a while, actually, for Liquid to take this anyway. Nope, Thompson seems interested. There you go. With a Dream Coil. If you could even kill Quake for there, honestly, kind of a freebie right now. We've got a Halberd um, as well for Sumail. He's finished that one off uh, after the Sanj and Armlet. Uh, Liquid will realize, oh, we don't actually have any Minus Armor, so we don't do this too quickly. <laughs> that moment's like, oh, you didn't pick up Medallion? Oh, I didn't pick up Medallion oh, either. Oh, my bad. <sighs> where, where, where's Armor down? Oh, you went Vessel? Okay, there's a Timber. Insania, I'm a position 5, dude. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I'm not yeah, a Snapfire. Sure, sure. I don't farm. <laughs> then you check Tiger's items, like, wait, what's that Maelstrom for? Yeah, you know, I got my Vessel. I have a right. It is actually the same build that MSS was doing in uh, the Major, actually, I remember. That let him, there was a game where they were playing the, the Hoodwink and they just let him farm for a while to kind of become a pseudo-carry. Finish off Roche. Oh, yeah, I managed to sneak it. Thompson picking up the Aegis as well here. It means that uh, Liquid is going to be thanked for That's reality uh, rift. a favor. Yeah, reality rift for you, dude. Just a little small amount of minus armor will do the trick here. I really CK, is. not a bad Roche taker either, yeah. honestly. Not really is all it took. And you are Radiant. So you have an advantage there as well. Top. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Soxa yet again, unable to blink away. Will be killed off pretty easily by Boxy. He's got blink and Yules now. I, I think I like this as a solution. I feel like for a lot of the Mars, usually you'll see one or the other. But he's been having, honestly, a pretty good game. He's third uh, in terms of mm -hmm. net worth. And we do need as, as many resources as we can get, um, especially early on, to try and stop Topson um, from just, again, having a free game. So far, I'd say that they're quite successful. 5-3-2 and two right now on Topson. As we look over towards the mid lane, where Seb is going to turn and just oh. get all the spider lanes, leaving only one alive with the Crimson Guard active. Then chaining his way around. Boxy, though, is going to be able to find no tail. Arctic Burn active, but shot down there with the crossbow bolts of Taiga. And we'll get yet another kill here onto the Winter Wyvern. Taiga, 7-2-7 seven, and seven right now on the position for Squirrel. Position for Squirrel, I agree. I feel like his performance at Hoodwing has been stellar this game. And this is why I think the Hoodwing does a bit better with, on the four position, right? Like, I don't mind five positions uh, Hoodwink. I think it, it works. 
But the four position just gives him so much, gives her sorry, so much liberty to just get kills all over the map, get some more expensive items, become a pseudo core later on to the game. In this game, you kind of need it because you don't have any full core or any full carry really. Mars, Razor, Broodmother, they all kind of fulfill this condition somewhat. OG has a very clear carry in the form of CK, a yeah. nice scaling core as well in the form of a puck. So it's nice to get the hoodwink to fill that gap and uh, mitigate some of the impact or some of the weaknesses you have in the late game. Yeah, uh, it's also going to help your illusion clear quite a bit. You know, if you pop Phantasm in the middle of a fight, Taiga, now that he's just about to complete the uh, the Maelstrom, uh, is going to be able to yeet an Acorn right at him, and, and that'll do a good amount of damage here, as well as slowing, of course, the CK uh, and trying to get rid of these illusions. So a little bit more illusion clear. Not bad, considering your two other cores, being Razor and Broodmother, aren't really famous for their ability to take down, you know, waves of enemies, more of just a 1v1 kind of uh, vibe on these guys. Uh, so, you know, if, if you got the money, you know, you got to flaunt it here. And that's exactly what Taiga is looking to do. OG, yet again, smoked up. Going to be looking for a fight as No-Tail. Up to the high ground he goes, planting the ward. Will be able to scout Insania and Illidan both. And instead, is just going to choose to try and TP away. Okay. Like they that moment where you see a, t a tree breaking, and you're like, hmm, was there something there? Oh, they're going to get the D ward immediately. And I uh, believe that's Illidan just finishing off BKB, if I'm not mistaken, right? Freshly delivered. Yep, that's a uh, fresh BKB for Illidan. A little bit of a turning point since we don't see an Ags on Puck just yet, but Tossin's actually kind of close to it. 700 gold for that BKB. And once you get that, it's a really easy way to control Illidan. A bit of, uh, and also the Broodmother. Tier 2 tower trade proposed, likely to be accepted by both teams, OG without a Fortify here, uh, are going to just lose the tower to all of the Spiderlings. Lots of those. Uh, but in exchange, they should be able to get this tower, I want to say. So it's taking Seb quite a while, though. And it looks like Liquid, yeah, with the disarm, of course, if you disarm any neutrals, uh, and, and Pango players will know this, um, they just stop moving. Same could be said of uh, all of the uh, range, or sorry, all of the um, lane creep in the game. You disarm them, they will stop moving. No. Crip's only purpose is to murder things, so of course, if they can't attack, what's the purpose of their life? So they just sit there, still no, forever. Smoke. Liquid are going to be heading back into their own jungle where they see Thompson. Aegis still available oh. though for another minute. Yule Scepter boxes Yule himself, and now Seb on the way in. They almost get through Insania. He does manage to at least pop uh, the ultimate onto himself before the finger could kill him off. Taiga finally with the kill onto Soxa. Illidan with the BKB now held down by the Winter's Curse yet again. Seb still looking for these backliners along with Thompson as the Maelstrom procs out from the Acorn shot. Doing a bit of work. Illidan, though, getting focused as he's been kited around by No Tail Sumail, throwing the three second stun on top. Topson as well, closing the gap. Bushwhack not finding anything as it's going to be Illidan instead taking the drop. Taiga held down now in place by the Dream Coil. Ought to be finished off here with just with the right clicks alone. Seb with the uh, Timber Chain able to get the job done. OG still hunting for more, but no one else in the area for Liquid means that it's a successful fight. A 1v2 or a 2 for 1 trade, and the reveal here of the Lion uh, Aghanim Shard, which actually made him a little bit more annoying than Liquid were prepared for. Me, the biggest reveal actually was the Lotus Orb on Seb. Uh, both incredible Lotus Orbs. The quick Lotus Orb on, on Thompson saved him from the Fortune's. Yeah, from the Fortune's end route, right? It allowed him to move freely. Like it was immediate right after. And then even. Uh, Forcing back the acorn shot would actually put the hoodwink in a difficult position because that does slow you ever so slightly. So well played. Really well played by Seb. Those little storms were, were really quick and it's almost like he knew what spells he had to dispel immediately. So uh, I think that's a really smart pickup. The extra armor is also very useful this game. His timber sub performance has been. Very impressive this game. And that pretty much gave him the team fight to me, honestly, it was the two Lotus Orbs. And now Thompson is even more free than before. He's gonna go for the Kai and Satan, so starting to actually build some items that will give him some damage. Insania, he does the ward. Now he's technically invisible, oh. but they have so much area damage, he doesn't seem to care. Oh, they the will kill the courier on top of that. Winter's curse for Illidan, but here comes Boxy. The Slua stuns for Illidan, who has the BKB. No deal is in trouble. He's gonna come out of this ice. With a headache, Illidan will finish him off, and Samael wants to continue fighting first time. Oh. Illidan with that tower, Samael just kills him. A big spider and a Spartan is trying to go after Samael. Can they do so? They did break the Dream Gold, they didn't know there was an axe on it. So Quigga will get stunned for quite a while, but save with the False Promise. Now the Hex instead for Insania, punishing him for his sins. Liquid will end up losing three. OG turned this team fight around, and now they're in the lead. 
Sumail showing up with the boys. He added so much damage there. Uh, despite a full duration static link, a full 174 damage stolen from the Winter Wyvern, uh, it just wasn't enough. Sumail able to just kind of 1v1. I mean, they, they did him the favor of doing it one at a time, first versus uh, Illidan, and then Koifo joining the fight a little bit later. Uh, but that just made it a little bit too easy. It was a great initial arena out from Boxy, but um, unfortunately, they, they didn't really capitalize off of it too well. That's going to be then OG already up into the high ground tier three tower, taken down. Looking for the first lane of Ferrix. The acorn shot. There's a couple of procs out from the Maelstrom. Bushwhack actually catches the illusions. Good Bushwhack. But I still think these racks will fall. Some mail will end up taking this one lane of racks. Seb. No, no, hit it. Nice. Hit it. There we go. Bushwhack. Seb gets stuck to a tree, but it's fine. We're good. He can get away. He also has the Kayan sign, so he's, he's pretty safe. He's trying to cut off a backliner here. Instead, he's going to be punished for this one yet again. This time, though, he's not going to look to snap the coil, but Sumail's going to snap his neck. I don't know if spiders have necks, but ask Sumail. He's, he's just murdered Koikva. Arena set up, though. Tops it too fast on the phase shift. shift. And now Illidan was expecting that one to connect. He's got a BKB just to run away. OG, though, their foot's on the gas. They're not letting up here. As now Insania back onto the low ground. Sumail trying to pull someone out of position here. Just needs the vision. Will settle eventually for Boxy, who now pops his BKB. But Illidan hexed up. Soxa on the high ground, removing him, slowing the mana, or slowing the, uh, the Razor to a crawl. OG, I think eventually are going to have to back off, considering they cannot yet push this Tier 3 tower, considering the Tier 2 is still pretty healthy. I just wait for the Roshan now. There's no need for you to... I mean, take the tier 2 maybe mid and then go for the Roshan. You know you're in the lead now because Liquid could not really execute their Tricore. Hoodwink hasn't been able to transition into being like a pseudo-core either. Just yet. Later on, Liquid might be able to recover a bit, but right now you're in the lead completely. We did speak about how free this puck is, and I think it's showing more and more in these fights, right? He's Dream Calls. He can use... have Hadrily doesn't really care. He just needs to catch one hero they want to kill. He's constantly all over the place, Thompson. Nobody can really catch up to him and murder him. Even with the build-up box he went for, which I think was pretty appropriate. You need a hex or something. Yeah. Because those phase shifts has been so hard to stop. And I think it's going to get even harder now. This is BKB on the way. It's actually the Kaya and Sanj. It might be the better choice here, to be honest. Because I think these fights are, are, are destined to go a little bit longer than the duration of BKB. But now there's phase shift in a second. Great Winter's Curse here. We're going to be able to use that waning rift to escape the walls. The arena sharpshooter is going to fly away harmlessly. Seb, though, looking to counter-initiate. He's got, actually, the flamethrower active onto box. He pinned to a tree and held down now about the bushwhack. Liquid just looking to buy themselves enough time to escape. But OG yet again nice going aggressively. Coil. The coil finding both supports. Seb diving underneath the Tier 2 tower now. Plenty of damage. Sumail onto the back lines with the Phantasm active. As Illidan looking to try and do the same here to Soxa. Sumail held down a bit by the bushwhack. As there's going to be now the, the, the false promise used on Insania. Sumail has dispatched that at least of Taiga. Koikva is going to be eluding the, the fight, but lane. Sumail and Seb Open. onto the tier three towers. There goes Insania. And they forced Odin to TP back home there. Sumail wants more kills. He has a blink dagger and a four. Boxy also wants these kills. Oh, look at the Lotus Orb. That sets up yet again. Boxy in trouble. It's once more Seb with a split second Lotus Orbs. Getting a kill he had no right to there. What did he have for breakfast today? <laughs> yeah, that's what everyone was asking yesterday for Soxa. He had his Wheaties today. That is, uh, I got the reaction times right now. Just oh, I see, the Wee, the Wheaties. Ah, I see, I see. Seb takes down the, they're gonna take down this tower relatively easily. And, yeah, what what, what does Liquid do now, honestly, to, rec to get back into this game? It's, it's tough for them. I, I don't, like their Travis is not made to play this late and definitely not made to play this late with th this far behind, right? Yep. I mean, OG, I, I think now they're remembering. Okay, guys, what do we do now? All oh, right, Roche is up. Second Roche in the game, most powerful Roche. Uh, they, you know, buffed by something like, I think, 160% or something with the addition of a 1,400 gold item on top of the cheese. So far, though, they've, they've got no interest. They're just seeing, they're waiting around to see if uh, Liquid will... At this stage, you know, make a, a pretty aggressive move into their own triangle, which is kind of a crazy thing to say, considering it's their own triangle, but that just tends to be the pace of the game when you're down 13k with uh, a Broodmother on your team. Like, uh, playing a damn good game here for sure, but uh, like you're saying, it's it's not just a draft. It's just not a draft, rather, that's meant to go late game here. Oh. Insania. And now Insania. Okay, has the Glimmer Cape for now. We have a bottle, we have a haste actually on some mail in case he needs this. 
I like that the cleave talent also gives uh, CKs a... I think this is partially why CK has been picked up a lot these days. I've seen the cleave talent being picked up on almost everyone. Because that extra little farming speed it gives you into the mid game makes you a really solid late game carry. And CK always was in that position, but would often fall off. Because what build do you go for that gives you farm? Midas really was the only one. It was a very sink or swim kind of carry. The cleave gives you a lot more uh, of a contingency plan. Thompson is itching for a fight. He caught just a whiff there as Boxy walked in and, and cleared the wave with the God's Rebuke, and Thompson immediately jaunts onto the Illusory Orb there that he just threw to clear the wave as well. That'll at least buy them the space and the time to do Roshan, though. Second Rosh, Aegis Cheese, and that Shard on the way here of OG after they... I mean, you remember the, the circumstances that kind of aligned for them to be able to sneak the first Rosh, having absolutely no problems with it this time around. In fact, Thompson, he's, he's got a Reaver in the Quick Buy. Is that going to be for the Overwhelming Blink? I, yeah, it is. Interesting. Is that to cancel more blink daggers, or just because... I mean, he did go for the spell amp, so... I guess it does amplify that too. Canceling blinks, the slow versus taiga is going to be super punishing. If Liquid Kill can get, like, one kill here and refill that vessel... I mean, it's just so difficult now. Topson, or sorry, Seb make that with the Bloodstone on top of the Lotus that he's just been making play after play after play with. <laughs> There's some mail now. There's a item. smoke here. Heart of Tarask for some mail. Okay, Taiga. Trying to kill the lion first. Oh, not in the middle of Aeon. That's, that's not what you were looking for. Boxy still has the arena of blood. Got some mail this time. out of it. Upson save. They're going to kill Motel first. But Elden is in trouble as well. Some mail just pummels him to death. Boxy's the next target. They silence him and crush him. They just taken two cores out of the fight. It's only a big spider left. What is she going to do? First, they go for Insania and Taiga. They leave Quake for alone. The spider's been leashed. The GG is called. Liquid has had enough. OG will take game number one in a very deciding, uh, very impressive fashion, honestly. Yeah, Particularly I, great performance from Sip. I, I might use the word decisive. Um, I, I think like it's not decisive in the in the true way.